burns and scalds are injuries resulting from contact with fire, electricity, friction, steam, or boiling liquids. They are classified by the degree of injury to the body tissues. The seriousness of a burn or scald depends on the size of the area affected as well as the depth of the damage to the tissues. First degree burns are the least serious. They involve only the outer skin which is reddened accompanied by slight swelling. Second degree burns affect the under skin and result in blisters. Third degree burns are burns in which the skin is destroyed and the tissues underneath are damaged. In severe cases, muscles, nerves, and blood vessels may be destroyed and the whole area charred. When a large portion of the body is covered by second degree burns, death may occur, but a much smaller area injured by third degree burns can also cause death. Physical shock is chiefly responsible for deaths that occur during the first day or two after the injury. And when burns are extensive and shock is severe, death frequently occurs in the first few hours. First, remove all clothing from the injured area unless it is stuck to the skin. If it is, cut away the clothing around it. First aid treatment for burns and scalds is aimed primarily at excluding air from the affected area, relieving pain, minimizing and treating for shock, and preventing infection. Cover burns or scalds as soon as possible with a clean, cold, moist dressing made from gauze or bandage material that has been dipped in cold water. If available, use four to six layers of loosely applied gauze and cover the entire area of the burn with the dressing. Keep the patient covered since there will be a tendency to chill and treat him for shock, which can be severe in the case of burns. No grease or oil should be applied as these make it necessary to clean the affected area with solvents before medical treatment can begin. Water soluble preparations may be used provided they have been approved by a physician. Be careful when dressing burns and scalds because they are subject to infection the same as open wounds. Do not break blisters in the burned area and never permit burned surfaces to come in contact with each other. Apply several layers of cold, wet dressing to the burned area. Bandages and cover dressing should be loose enough to prevent pressure on the burned surfaces, and they should be checked frequently to see that they don't become too tight in case of swelling. For the victim of critical or moderate burns, if competent medical help is not available for one hour or more and the victim is conscious and not vomiting, he may be given a weak solution of salt and soda in a glass of water. If medical help is immediately available, do not give him fluids by mouth. Again, treat the injured person for shock. The eyes are particularly sensitive to a variety of chemical substances such as lime, cement, caustic soda, acids, and alkalis. When a person has been burned by chemicals, wash the area thoroughly with clean water to dilute the chemical. Do not use a neutralizing solution in the eye. Keep a continuous stream of water flowing over the burned area from a spigot or container for 15 minutes or more. Then give the same first aid treatment as for any other burn. For extensive burns and all other burns on the body, follow the three fundamental steps. One, remove clothing from the burned area of the body except where stuck to the skin. Two, apply a cool, moist dressing of gauze or other bandage materials loosely over the burns to separate skin surfaces from contact with one another. Three, apply an outer dressing using triangular or cravat bandages. 
cover the dressing in the same manner that you would a wound or bleeding of the same area. As in the treatment of all serious injuries, the victim must be treated for physical shock, and medical help should be obtained immediately. Prompt, proper treatment is important. It can often mean the difference between life and death. 